Hello, and welcome to the QDR Crusaders, episode 170 for October 27th, 2015. My name is Rainbow Plasma. I'm the organizer, and this week I am also the editor. And today oh, I'm joined by... Snap. Burned a one, the special guest coordinator. And I'm at Miss Park. I was waiting for Flutter Guy, but he's not here, so I'm at Miss Park. I was going to say, that has to be intentional, right? I thought you were just trolling <laughs> me. No, I, I wasn't paying attention. I was waiting for uh, I was waiting for Ted, and it didn't come. So. <laughs> it never came. Do you think he was just like hiding in the Skype call? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Oh, it's just force a habit, fart. you know. Yeah, brain fart. So, so that's that's a that's a good segue into the fact that Ted's sick. Um, no. So Flutter Guy is not here this week because he is out with sickness. No. He he had some sort of name for the virus, but I think he's just being a drama queen. It sounds like said nanovirus. Yeah, it's the Batman nanovirus. nanovirus. Yeah, yeah, let's go with that. Because see, he's a programmer, <laughs> so he caught it through his nanotechnology right. computer. Right. right. It's all that. It's all that software he's been downloading. Yeah. Caught a virus. Yeah. I see. I see. Freaking nanovirus. Yeah. Uh, That'll happen like one day. Boys, I got about, the like, rhinovirus. He didn't. He didn't inject his USB uh, key safely. So yeah, I was gonna say happens. one day when oh, all no, got, you never uh, inject the USB unsafe. All got brain implants. <laughs> we're gonna get computer viruses in our heads. Yeah. Dude, so what's funny is every time I go to like uh, my lab class at uh, my college, I we have to bring a USB. So I always plug it in and we leave. And so I get bored of having to eject it. So I just yank it out. It's like, whatever. I don't care. And the Mac hates that. It yeah. hates it. It always yeah, yells do. at me. And it's like it comes up with a thing, makes like a loud like burnt noise. And it's like, how dare you pull out your USB? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, God, I'm sorry. And then I run the hell out of the class. Yeah, I feel like Windows is a bit more like they understand they're like oh, okay i like i get it but yeah macs are very are very so uh, adamant about like that. the sound like when you have like the computer volume like turn all the way up and you don't even realize it because you don't really do anything in class and it's just like mm -hmm. dare you <laughs> uh, so ted's out uh that means of course we have computer talks uh for, like the only time ever on the podcast <laughs> Right. Um, so yeah, he, he should be back next week, I believe. Um, I think he's just he's just not feeling up to it right now. So um, I don't think he's moving yet. So he should be back next week for our Halloween thing. But we'll talk about the Halloween thing later at the end of the show. Queen. Um, some of the other stuff that we should talk about is the fact that we were so wrong about them's fighting herds last Wrecked. week. We, you know how there's the expression like, "Oh, that's egg on my face." That wasn't just egg on my face. Someone made like eggs benedict and then like put that in an omelet and then put that on oh, that benedict. That smeared delicious. it all over our face and body and was like oh, so, eggs. someone took a live chicken and just like smacked us with it what, like, what did you say last like, week about that game we we were basically like from what it looks like right now we're not sure whether or not the game's going to be funded or not oh, okay well it did because at the time yeah. there was like four days left and we calculated how much fun how much money he was getting per day and, like, it was going to, like, just barely make it. And then, of course, like, out of nowhere, people yeah. donate, like, $100,000. Like, the $100, last like, two, two days of the thing, it's, like, surprise, like, over 50000 Yeah, like, so, I mean, I guess we should have accounted, but I'm glad. So, I, I, I'm I, happy to be wrong. I'm happy to... We weren't really wrong, because we didn't say it wouldn't be funded. But, like, I'm glad that it is funded. Yeah. Because I really, I really liked um what I could play of Fighting is Magic, and I really like what they've got yeah, going dude. there. So, I'm happy. Dude, goat hype. Mm. I, I, I like. Ugh. Go ahead, Joel. I can't say I care about the game in any way. I was about to interrupt him and say, "Don't like." <laughs> I was Shut about to mouth, say, "Don't Joel. give him, don't, don't give him time to talk," because I know he just doesn't care. Right. Ignoring really Joel don't. and not liking fighting games. Uh, I'm really happy that they met the what is it, the thing for for goat or whatever the extra character. Like, I'm happy they hit that point because, like, I really wanted to see what the goat character was because goats are baller. So, like. Like, admittedly, I'm not even the biggest fan of fighting games. Like, this is just cool, and it's, like, within my right. fandom, and it's like, and I like the original, like, just everything about it. So, like, right. that's why I am, like, intrigued about it. And so it's Did you fund cool the game thing. burned? I did. Okay, cool. Yeah, so did I. Um, I got the one with the little, like, move cards, you know, like the physical move cards for each of the characters Ooh, that they're going to send out. Nifty. I thought those were really cool. So, yeah. I'm super excited. Um, I now hate the fact that you know of course as a regular um development cycle it's now going to come out in like 2018 or something like or 2016 yeah. or anyways a long time from now it's going to come out 
which sucks, but it's really great to see that they did manage to pull that off, and with such spectacular overages too. Like that, I, I never, I never would have been able to tell you that they hit all their stretch goals. I'd never, I, I would have said you're crazy. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering what was going on in the background there. I don't know. Um, speaking of hype, in last week there was the Canadian federal election. Look at you. Which is cool. Because that was the first time that we've ever had a Canadian federal election while the podcast has been running. Whoa. Uh, it was also the first time that I ever got to vote in a uh, Canadian federal Whoa. election. Because the last time the federal election was around in 2011, I was just turning 18 a month after the election happened. So I actually got to vote and be a democratic citizen. And that was really, really cool. And I'm really happy about that. Whoa. And I don't want to make the show political. So <laughs> Congrats. I won't talk about anything more than that, such as who I wanted to be in or whatever. I just wanted to say democracy is cool and yeah. Canada is cool. You know who else is cool? Your new prime minister seems pretty cool. I keep seeing his yeah. face on Reddit. He's um pretty cool. Pretty cool. He's a pretty cool guy. He's also really young. Do you know how old he is? He's 40-something. 40 40-something? 40 okay. He looks yeah. younger than I... Ed, Ed, like thought I would have yes, guessed he, he was does in his 30s and like for a prime minister slash president whoever is really yeah. freaking young yeah yeah no he he looks very young it was actually used against him people called him like a pretty boy and like the the common theme was like you know <laughs> oh he's not ready but he's got nice hair <laughs> <laughs> which is really funny yeah. um gets the most Canadian attack ad ever it's like we gotta find a way to compliment him um <laughs> That's really but fun. yeah, it's it it seems like he's got a lot of cool policies, and I am super excited for the way that my country is headed. So yay, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Anyways, enough politics. We are an art show, and as such, we should talk about art, not the art of hair coifing. What did you just say? Can you say that on the podcast? Excuse you, hair coifing. Easy, buddy. There's children who watch <laughs> this. Crime it's, it's it's a coiffure. Yeah, all right, bless you. Anywho, <laughs> introduce your art. <laughs> to arrange or dress hair. All right. Um, my art piece is called Team by Adrarius. I can never say that person's name. Uh, Adrarius. 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 Um, yes, but it's called Team by Adrarius. It features Twilight and uh, a very large and in charge Spike. Yeah, dude, Spike looks baller. Yeah, he looks really good in this picture, and uh, I was really impressed with his depiction. Um, he looks awesome. So, I like that. What's funny is I was going to say Audrarius is like a great like fantasy name, you know? Like I could totally see that being in like World of Warcraft or something like that. Like Audrarius, mm -hmm. the raid leader or whatever the hell. Yeah. And it's like Spike very is like very, very fitting of like a really good like fantasy uh, rendering of like a crazy dragon, right? Like, mm -hmm. ugh, like, look at those flames, like, coming out between each one of his teeth. Like, man. That's cool. Yeah. Sassy. It's very intimidating. <sighs> I wish I could breathe fire out my teeth. <laughs> well, I don't think it's coming out of his teeth, Burned. That would be cool, too, though, to have fire literally shoot out of your coming teeth. Coming out of your teeth, out of the cracks of your teeth. Semantics. Teeth holes. <laughs> um, Hands I want off to... my eye holes. <laughs> I'm the eye hole man. So I wanted to I wanted to also make note of the fact that these scales are very three-dimensional, which is something that I don't mm. see a lot when you're depicting these large dragons or um, in some cases large sharks because sharks also have kind of scale-like uh, features. But it's really cool to see the protrusions, especially in the kind of like top of the head and the upper neck where it bends. Mm. You can really see that it's not just like these these scales that... Um, kind of fit together and are smooth if you were to touch them. It's like, no, it's like it's like rocks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's things that stick out. It's just like, it's well, done I mean, really well. No? People will do dragons their own way. Like Some people do dragons like snakes. Snakes aren't spiky, but they have scales. Yeah, it's, it's true. I, I'd say that's the most typical way that I see dragons yeah. done is, is that kind of like gemstones like and rocks and stuff. Snaily thing. Snail? I, I, <laughs> snaily? Snaky. Snaky. I meant snaky. Snaky. I don't um, have shells. Normally, when I see like uh like drawings of dragons, I see them with. Well, I guess when I think like, oh, how to draw a dragon, I think like really like old school kind of like fantasy stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. like even on my desk, I have this little like mold of a dragon. And it's got like the big pokey blue scales, you know. I do know your desk. 
Thank you. You're such a nerd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nerd. Everybody but point and laugh at the nerd. <laughs> what, I, what I was going to say is you were mentioning it just like how, uh, how how'd you put it? How they're, uh, they look 3D and pointy. And I say that's right. cool because it, it's, it's not easy to do that, right? It's not easy to paint like a bunch of these scales. And so like something really cool I noticed is the, what is it? This, that like green spine on the middle of Spike's skull face. Mm-hmm. That how it sticks up. You notice how it's actually like um, how does it, it has shadow, so it's light on one side and then shadow on the other, so it actually looks like it's kind of like exists in three D. So it's not just like right. green going down him. It has, actually has like shadow on one side of it. So it's like each each one of these scales has like a highlight, a shadow, and then uh, like an edge that it's all like that's all like painted meticulously. Yeah. And it's like I guess it's it's like it kind of looks in, in the placement of hair but it's not it's it's the spines right and, and so it also has the sense of like the each one of those they have individual scales there too right like it's not one big thing it's got its own set of like um separations mm. Mm. nifty stuff nice that was the longest that that was the longest silence in podcast history i'm i'm gonna leave all of that in fantastic <laughs> what's funny is like when you like finish your statement i was quite literally sipping my tea and i was like yes i was satisfied with that <laughs> you know what i think i think it it can be a really good thing when you're silent about a piece because then we're just sitting here and we're appreciating it but i'm not gonna sit here and just appreciate it because we're on a podcast <laughs> so um i'm gonna talk about twilight I think the style is a very interesting um, choice. And the thing that I noticed at first was the contrast between Spike's quote-unquote hair, which is not hair, it's more like his spines, and the way that Twilight's hair is depicted. Because when I saw Spike, I immediately thought, oh, that kind of looks like a mohawk, right? It sticks out more so than the rest of his scales. And then I remembered, wait, aren't all ponies supposed to have, like, mohawks? Like, that's how their hair grows? And then I looked at Twilight, and I was like, oh, that's definitely not the case there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's... Interesting to me how the hair is depicted on this kind of anthro style yeah, because it's, it's, a, it's definitely a weird not anthro. horse-like. Yeah. Yeah. It's like she's got real human hair and hands, but she's also got a horn and pony And she's and got pony, pony ears, face. but she seems to have human hair. But she's got a pony face. Yeah. Hmm. It's interesting. But, I mean, I, we've seen uh, Adrarius' uh, humanized and anthro stuff before. We brought up uh, this piece in particular before um, where we had a debate about the bottom hooves and hands things. Half hooves are great. Yeah. So obviously Adrarius has um, their own kind of uh, depiction for Anthro. And I think it just kind of, uh, you know, this is just their their representation of that. I just Mm -hmm. found it interesting because it's very clear to me that in this piece that it's human hair as opposed to (laughs) pony hair, which I think in most cases would be hard to tell. But you can, mm-hmm. I think you can tell here. There's still like pony-like similarities, and we can't tell too much with like the angle of the head, meaning that there's not like hair on the sides of Twilight's head, which it doesn't look like. We know where mm-hmm. your bangs would be, or not bangs, but sideburns rather, uh, right. or like some things like that. But it's just like it's not a good angle to tell that. But it's still like right. it's a it's a neat take on the like anthropomorphic head, right? So it's mm, all that. Yeah that scale between like humanized and then like pony, you know, where, where does it fit in between? Yeah. Yeah. But something that I like about this, uh, is just like, I I think I say this about a lot of pieces, honestly, it's really my (laughs) go-to, but it's how it's painted. Uh, and I'll explain that because I always say I like how it's painted, but like it's done really quickly. So it looks almost like it has qualities of a speed painting. So there's areas that are just like really rough and unrendered. Um, like I'm, particularly looking at underneath twilight's arm and like underneath her cape uh like her belt and then uh, the shadow and like wrinkles on her pants are just like really rough and translucent just kind of like thrown in there and that then then yet you have other areas that are really really like uh, how do we like finely defined and rendered like twilight's face and head like hair and then also obviously spike's face and all of his scales on his face and then like the flame too there's a lot of care put into like uh, making that flame cutting coming out from between his teeth and so it's like it's a nice play between um like unrendered and then like more like tightly rendered uh and i i always like seeing that i always try to compliment it when i see it uh in different pieces we feature mm-hmm. i really enjoy the expressions that they have as well 
to me, it really tells a story of the situation that they're in. Um, not only the expressions, but also the poses is, is like the body language is, is very apparent as well. To yeah. me, what this uh, says is that there's some sort of foe across from them. And uh, Twilight is attempting to kind of calm Spike down. Um, but she's not very happy about it either. And mm-hmm. she's letting it be known that they're both not happy about what this foe has said or done. But she doesn't think it's the right time to to cause conflict or whatever. It, it's It's a very cool uh thing because both of them i think have very similar expressions just despite the fact that their faces look nothing alike yeah when you're done with very powerful eye movement your fan fiction about this let me know (laughs) look okay (laughs) i've just i've just got a good imagination i like the narrative that you create it's like you give more context to it than like what uh it like has given so it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna make this story i'm gonna write it and i appreciate that because like there totally is uh, like an intense, like, uh, how do how do you put it? expression to both of them that like totally yeah. says something like it's very daunting, it's very challenging, like furrowed brows, head tilted down, like it's very like um, uh, conflictual, you know. There's mm-hmm. some legit hate in those eyes in both of theirs, you know. It's 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 cool, you know. You mentioned like you know I'm giving it the story. To me, when I look at something like this, it's like it writes itself. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised to hear that a bunch of other people had a similar idea because I think there are some situations that can just be conveyed, um, depending on how you know well you depict mm-hmm. the the facial expressions, the body language, um, which I think is really, I, I just wanted to really emphasize the importance of body language because I focus so much on expressions a lot of the times that oftentimes I will miss out on body language, but that can be very important. Mm-hmm. And Twilight's body language is incredibly important well, to the quote unquote story behind this. They're partly one and the same, like body language yes. and expression. Yep. Like it's Absolutely. just two different, like expression and body language are the same. It's you have facial expression and then body language, yes. right? It's just the place of expression. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I agree. That's a great point. What's funny is uh, my head, for some reason, it's go to like, Oh, uh, what what like gives a narrative to this? Is like with the, with the title team too, and how both of them like Twilight's holding like huge spike back. Is like they feel like uh, Twilight feels like a pokey trainer. It's like a Pokemon yeah. trainer, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, like that's something. Yeah, absolutely. Gym. I could see that. Like, I could see uh, the other, you know, like a uh, person, like I don't know, Trixie or something with like a giant bear with like a very similar pose <laughs> cross across the the pokey gym. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's move on to the next piece, which I believe is yours, Burned. <clears throat> so the piece that I chose for this week is called Sparkle by Drek Bay. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Drek Bay, am I getting that right? I'd say so. Probably. Drek Bay caught me sparkling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think they in caught me Drekken. the artist description, uh, you can call them Drekki. So Drek, Drekki. But anywho. Um, so this is really really cute which is the main reason why i picked it but the second reason is again uh i really appreciated how it was painted um and it's very like how do i put it it's using a lot of like digital brushes to like kind of make almost like watercolor like blending but it's not quite watercolor it's just like how similar how the how the the brushes like with transparency like paint over the top of each other creates really nice gradients between different hues and then shades so what i mean by that is like if you look at let's say uh just like how she shaded so like her coat her pony skin whatever you want to call it (laughs) her pinkness uh when it goes from like light pink to dark pink uh in areas in like her hoof or in her wings especially how like that big pink streak in her wing kind of like starts to blend out there's just all these areas that kind of like blend together underneath her hair too like the purple uh it's like so- a solid shade on the top of her head and then like blends into her nose and it's just like really really good color choices too i feel um like everything's kind of sort of like a, a purple but then you have like the pinks and like blues that uh blend into it in the background the blues are subtle but in her hair obviously the blue very like stands out it's very striking um and i guess the last point to make is the style as well like just how twilight is uh like her proportions and stuff like how big her head is versus how floofy her hair is and then like small her body is and how like round she is her Mm. eyelashes she's got very anime hair yeah where it's like like, coming off of her head it's very big too you know Mm. and like the big bangs on the side of her head yeah it's very pointy Mm. cute stuff what do you two think i think it's cute i mean you've pretty much just said literally everything that i was gonna say but yeah 
You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, yeah, I mean, I personally had a really interesting view on this before we chatted briefly, but uh, for some reason, I, I haven't really watched too much Steven Universe. I watched a couple episodes when we got together for BronyCon, mm-hmm. um, but I, I don't follow the show. But to me, when I saw this, there was kind of like this... this it just seemed like it it was a little bit in that style. I don't know what it was about it, um, but it reminded me a lot of Steven Universe. I'm not sure if it was the eyes or, or the coloring or things like that, but it really did remind me of that. And I enjoy the, I enjoy that kind of style. Um, the show style directly from Steven Universe, I'm not the biggest fan of, but you could say that about MLP style as well. I think the way that artists interpret it I might like a lot more than the original st- show styles of yeah. either one of the shows. So I really like how it seems in my mind to have kind of merged the two together into this interesting uh, style. Mm. I think you might get that from like the pastel colors, the way in which that this right. drawing is kind of uh, colored is very kind of like lighter and pastel and uh, Steven Universe likes to use certain pastel color palettes depending on the moment. And then when the show gets more intense, depending on how dramatic the scene is, uh, the coloring will change as well and become more brightly saturated versus desaturated. And so maybe just like the very analogous color scheme of this and kind of like pink might remind you of some of the episodes of Steven Universe that you've seen. Right. But um, like style wise, I think... Uh, I I mean it's all cartoons right but it's still like it's an artist rendition on like just like how to paint it so like when I see this style I see more similarities in other deviant artists like if you know the name Purple Kecleon you guys know her yes, work you're absolutely right as soon as you said the name it was like yep that's what it looks like <laughs> that's yeah, crazy I, I do recognize can... it being like similar to Purple Kecleon but I've got no idea what Steven Universe is so I didn't make yeah. any connection there totally fine but it's funny that I can name like an artist like Purple Kecla, and it's like, oh yeah, we know her, right? I have yeah. pins of hers all over my bag. Yeah, absolutely. But it's like that. But I see that mainly in the painting because Purple Kecla loves to again be like do awesome stuff with digital painting. Uh, uses like really great, like vibrant, like contrasting colors, and then also loves to make the eyes stand out. Like I feel like that that really stands out in this in this piece, where it's like the eyes are like very finely def- uh, defined, like sharp edged, pointy, and then those like square bottom eyelashes too, and like the really mm-hmm. bright irises. Um, again, reminds me of kind of like Purple Kecleon style, just to like compare to another Deviant artist. I would like to point out, I just went and looked it up, Purple Kecleon is no longer the name that that artist uses. Mm. They've changed really? their name to Glitched Puppet. Mm, and it fact. was on August 30th, and the journal says, you may have noticed I changed my name. I'm distancing myself from Pokemon work. So they're now glitched. It's it Now it reminds mm. me of Glitched Puppet. <laughs> so Glitched that's Puppet, interesting. interesting. Yeah, no, that's an uh, interesting fact. Because like, when I think the name Purple Calculon, like I think Pokemon work, I think uh, Pony work, and like that's sort of it. And then also there are uh, now Glitched Puppet's original work. What was it? The... Um, you guys remember Floraverse? I believe what it was. I saw a lot of uh, saw them doing a lot of Floraverse stuff. So I th- so I guess changing your name to uh, Glitched Puppet is like a way to like um, if like because I believe the what is it the we're we're talking about a completely different artist when this is the artist we're featuring. But anyway, we'll talk about Purple Kecleon later. Maybe we'll feature her next week. But she did a really cool thing named Floraverse. Go look it up. Glitched Puppet. Fun fact. More about this. Um, Anywho, I like like one of the reasons why I chose to feature this this week is that like I'm kind of I kind of like saving uh, pieces of pony artwork where it's like man I really like how this is done um, and I want to do it myself if I ever like do more art related stuff or ever get off my butt and like make more pony right. artwork and I really want to do like really good digital painting and I felt like this was like the perfect example of like holy crap like if I could make something like this I would be like unbelievably happy with myself and like what I could be able to achieve and it's like this artist doesn't even have that much stuff in their deviant art gallery there's only like this is like the most fully fledged like digital painting I think they have in their gallery um and then the other things are like little doodles or just a character or something or there's like a Pinkie Pie in a similar style but like this twilight with like even the backgrounds you could say it's inherently simple it's just kind of like some colors that make like a galaxy with stars but like how the character right. is rendered and then put on this background seems very like lovingly done um, in comparison, just like a pony doodle, right? And yeah, 
I feel like this, I enjoyed the style so much that it blew me away. And it's just like, I like, I want to do this. Like, this is something that it's like, this meets all of my like loves and style requirements to be like a favorite your piece, buttons. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed the background now that you mentioned, it. you know, I am a, a big fan of kind of these simple textured backgrounds, you know, it's not just one color, but it's got it. It's got some texture to it. And, uh, I enjoy also the fact that the colors in the background are very similar to the colors on Twilight. Like when I look at the background and we look at those colors, it kind of reminds me of her hair a little bit or, you know, just her in general. Mm -hmm. Um, But without being this huge thing that stands out because it's very washed out. And, and you know, as I mentioned before, the, the textured part of it, too, makes it seem less less like a like a pattern in the background and more just kind of like stuff. Hmm. um and it, it's it, it's a really interesting choice there it's it's surprisingly washed out in terms of saturation hmm. um but yeah it's it's yeah. yeah i feel like that really pushes twilight forward you know like yeah. how yeah, kind of absolutely. like yeah. dulled and subdued everything is it really like ba- it basically makes everything around twilight negative space right and so all the negative space is very dully colored which makes the her pinks and blues really like bam like come out absolutely yeah. absolutely um yeah. I, I definitely and i think I that's uh that probably it's, it's, it's obviously intentional but it's quite clever on that part too mm-hmm. um another little style bit that i really love there's two little bits actually but uh the first one is do you notice her outlines you notice how they change colors mm-hmm. we featured quite a few artists that like to play with how outlines change colors but yeah. not only do twilight's outlines change color they also show um shadow so like if you look at the tips of her wings like the top tips are kind of like lighter and then as they round they start to get darker like their shadow on her outlines as right, well. right they're also, not excluded yeah. from the lighting of the scene also thickness to a, to, a, to an extent as well oh yeah line thickness man that's it that's a good one joel like when, oh, when did we talk about that? We talked about another artist uh, forever Sometime ago. in the other 169 episodes oh, you've done God. this podcast. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, like line width is a fantastic way to make your line art seem more interesting. Might have been mm-hmm. our sketch episode, like our right. OG sketches episode. Oh, my. Because I mean, if, um, if you look at Twilight's Tale, there are parts that don't even ago. have outlines, and there's one part in particular by her Ooh, left, I uh, love our that. left uh, foot where it doesn't. The, the line the outline is over the top of and you can see um like a hair behind it do you guys we keep talking about other artists when we're looking at this art but do you guys remember <laughs> clockwork orange is it clockwork uh, orange or uh, well, clockwork orange is the big steampunk one that we talked about like two weeks ago oh it? dang it uh names mm, no that was was it oh, i don't remember um there there's another artist make who, your like, point who who plays with outlining things and then having it be unoutlined. So they play with just being like cell shaded with no outlines and then having outlines. I can't remember what their name is. I'd have to look it up. But since I'm running short on time, I think for this one a little bit, um, the, what is it? The color on the hair too. You notice how it's highlighted with that blue and then it kind of like cuts through all the other colors of the hair, just like on her top bangs. Like, I just really like that touch. And I was just kind mm. of pointed out as a little, a little cute style thing. Yeah. Um, did did we mention the like little accessory pieces on her? The collar with no shirt and the sock things with no. With oh no yeah. Uh-uh. yeah. I don't think we've referenced it yet. Yeah, like ones? I was I was gonna bring those up because I thought those were super cute, and um, I I thought it was a very interesting touch because when we apply clothing trends to ponies, we apply them in a very human way, which is to say, very covering, right? Mm. But ponies are naked all the time, and that's not a big deal. So like, why would they? Why wouldn't there be something in between the human style, which is cover everything, <laughs> and the pony style, which is cover nothing? And and it's really cool to see someone play with that intermediate step. You know, they just have accessories, right? They have a, a, a collar and and some and some fingerless gloves. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's very interesting, and and I really feel like this is a more unbiased view of clothing on ponies. Because I think when even people in the show, when you look at the show, whenever they put on clothes, it's like big dresses. Like that's like it's either all or nothing. Right. And yeah, I right. feel like that's very biased towards a human perspective where like our culture. And so I think this is a really awesome depiction of the in between because there absolutely can be in between, you know, um, because there's no issue with <laughs> being nude as a pony because totally. there's no issue with that. So, yeah, I, I really think that's clever and yeah. i i didn't realize it until <laughs> i started talking about it how 
cool that is from a world building perspective it actually it really awesome. made me ask questions about the clothing too because i was like is this supposed to be like a toss to something is it supposed to be like a crossover um because originally right, when i saw it i thought it was like it looked like star trek stuff does it look like star trek stuff to you i could see where you're coming from there yeah because i mean she's in space and so like i got this the space kind of like image in my head and then like there's twilight sparkle and then i've seen twilight sparkle being depicted as captain kirk a lot and then so i saw the clothes and i was like oh maybe this is a crossover is like captain twilight sparkle type deal yeah um, i can see where you're coming from but there's no other like proof than that there's no like star trek badge or anything it's not in the description it's just like i think it's like you said just kind of cute clothing it just the it sort of the way it looks like a u- uniform because it's collared uh makes me think that you know what i mean Mm-hmm. yeah 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 but uh something else that uh the clothes do besides being very cute is it also adds really good like color harmony um you notice that the pink in her clothes reflect the pink in her tail it's like the same hue of color like uh, yeah. the pink in her hair and tail um yeah. and also it has that little stripe of yellow like in her neck and her cl- and in like the very edges of her sleeves i freaking love that because it's it's a it's it's the color exactly it's the color complement of purple and it like fits fantastically and twilight is purple horse so purple horse purple yeah. yeah this piece is so it, yeah. good it is it is i i really enjoy how we've kind of i really enjoy us guys <laughs> i think we're great uh, no, i know i really enjoy great. how our analysis you're of this super. piece has evolved as well as it the, the subtleties of the piece start coming out. Right. Although I just mentioned subtleties and someone's going to be like, but Max, you you guys didn't mention the clothes. The clothes aren't subtle. You're just <laughs> dumb. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. The we, blue in the hair is refined. good. The purple in the eyes and the purple in the hair is good. Yeah, so it's good. good. It's really nice. Good. It's really nice. Oh, and that other artist I was thinking of, uh, they changed their name. It was like Clockwork or something, something, but they changed it to um, Kitten Paw Prints. Ring any bells? Oh. <laughs> no, I can't say. Right, well, I can't say it does. I believe there's a Tumblr out there. It's Kitten Paw Prints. Um, you can Google it. But uh, I believe she, I don't know for sure, has really, really cute artwork where uh, they like will draw something like cell shaded and then they'll play with like having a thick outline to thin outline to no outline at all. And it's really, it's really cool. Um, and they do it really. Uh, I think I know who you're talking. How's about. that? Oh. Fun fact. Because I like cool. sketches and stuff, so I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, they have a lot of really cute sketches. All right, let's move on to the final piece. To my thing. It is your thing. Yay. Okay, my thing is called Oh Manhattan by Scooty Bloom, who I quite like. Scooty Bloom. Scooty Bloom. We've featured her quite a few times. Her, him. Is Scooty Bloom uh, Big Hooves MacGuffin, or is that someone else? His art. His art. Okay. Uh, I have no idea. They're the one who did the, the Rainbow Dash and the thing with lightning bolts and Oh right, the... right. There's there's an artist that we see all over like conventions and deviant art and stuff, and he's made it his thing where like everything he draws has gigantic hooves. No, that's Granada. Okay. And and like at first people are gonna be like, Wow, you're being really mean about it, but like that's his like that's he's admittedly been like, Yeah, that's my thing. I'm the big hoof guy. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's Granada, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Never mind then. We, kind of we the are the somewhere. masters at bringing up other artists during our pieces. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. So yeah, anyway, this, this one on. features Rarity <laughs> going to town on a light post with Applejack staring at it going, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly I'll what it is. I like this scene in particular in this uh, in this episode, which is like, Manhattan, what you do to me, or whatever the quote is. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah. Yeah. Admittedly, I don't know what that's from, but I know it's iconic to something. Yeah, I don't actually know what the reference here is. I like I've seen it. Or a play. It's, it's it's an old movie because it, it's you, you see it referenced all the time, but I can't yeah. remember what it this is. Before I was born, Trug, Freak. American iconography, <laughs> black and white. Keep More vamping! Like... I'm googling. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look for it. Yeah, no. Uh, Scooby Bill always. I like this pony stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's Manhattan, not Manhattan. I know. I typed Manhattan. Uh, it still gives me pony stuff. <laughs> um, it's what is it? I like Scooty Bloom's cuteness style. Put it like that. Uh, a lot of their artwork is like. Always has Adorable. really cute features. Um, the heads are usually very big. The eyes are very eyes, big. The yeah. the faces are very like kind of floofy, fuzzy sometimes. I believe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's very like 
more pony accurate like big big head big eye yeah. uh cute pony stuff than and uh, they have the uh they have the assassin monkey feature. effect where everything looks like oh the characters look like clay models mm, yeah um yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. I, I feel like the coloring in this piece in particular is a little bit more subtle because there's areas that are like more like flat areas of color so when you look at something like in an assassin monkey piece there's no flat area of color everything has a ridiculous amount of gradients over the entire thing making it look all like realistic because everything hardly anything has like the same kind of like shade value hue yeah. whatever uh so in this piece when you look at like rarity's extended hoof it's very like white and broad and then like the front of uh, applejack is like all the same shade of orange yeah but that being said the where areas where there are shade uh, shaded it makes it seem very very like round and smooth and clay like mm-hmm. Like you pointed out, yeah, mm-hmm. and I like the fact uh, it, it's. I mean, it's it's kind of my thing, but the perspective of this one, where you're, you're sort of up off the ground, looking down on rarity with this weird fisheye lens type effect. Everything's mm-hmm. bent and yeah, warped totally. in a way that makes it look strange in rarity. So if it's huge, there <laughs> is there is definitely like a warping going on that I noticed, and and I couldn't quite like it's not something that you can just look at and be like oh yeah that's warped around this point or whatever it's <laughs> yeah. got a lot of different yeah. warping to do with pr- like um kind of what i'm going to describe as z axis like like as as the hoof comes towards the camera mm-hmm. there there's like a lot of like warping there because there's there's supposed to be a lot of depth there and but and yet on the left hand side applejack's not very warped so it's this interesting kind of warping in some places but not all of them um, yeah, there's definitely like a unique wrapping of perspective going on because you have the street that is slightly bent, like off to the right on the bottom right, and then you also have the street with the taxis going down, which is also bending back, creating like uh-huh. a big round thing with um, which like connects to the building and the stairs. So you notice that there's like this solid line that goes across the like middle of the piece that is like round, right? You know, like round like a globe, um, and then it's broken by the uh, the post that uh, Rarity's on being like bent as well off to the right hand side. Yeah. So there's right. like a bunch of interesting moving and like we mentioned like warping going on. Um, yeah. Which I feel like is interestingly broken by the building in the background above Rarity's head, that blue mm. building uh, in the background there, right. because it's done in reverse perspective, right. I believe. Um. Well, I guess. Not well, reverse perspective from the angle we'd be looking down. So, if we were looking up at the building, it would be correct, but we're looking down on Rarity and on Applejack, right? And then all of a sudden, yeah, on this weird rounded globe that they happen to be existing on, there's a building that is now tilted backwards, yeah. Like, um, like in order for everything to be accurate with the ground and the building, like the world that they live on is like the size of like a city, like yeah. the, the entire earth yeah, that they're right. on, you yeah. Know? Totally. I mean, it is, it's Manhattan, it is the world, right. Ah, I see. It's the center uh, of the universe. See, it's right. intrinsic. Yep. See, ah, oh, it's a yeah, fine art I statement. It. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a comment on uh, Western imperialism. Yeah. <laughs> imperialism. Like Man, that. see, in-depth critique here at the Cuter Crusaders. <laughs> well, okay. Speaking of critique, go on. I have a critique, and I don't. I, I like to. I like to stick to positive things because I think positive things are great, and I like to start it off. But I will say that I've been seeing a lot of artists do this. So this is not just Scooty Bloom. But a lot of artists have been doing this lately, and it's where they depict ears as having a dark part in the middle. But they do it in such a way that doesn't make it look like it has depth. And it kind of bothers me a little bit, just because that's not how I view ears at all. (laughs) To me, when I see that there's a dark part in the ear, it's because people are envisioning these ears as three-dimensional things so it would cast a shadow inside the ear because Mm. they're like ears that wrap around right Mm. whereas in this piece you can see it a little bit in applejack there's there's just no depth to that ear Mm. there's just a dark part um it looks like someone painted on the back of her ear and then put the ear on backwards um but you can also see it especially 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 in rarity's ear it just looks like the middle of her ear is is this black thing Right, it looks like the the part that would normally be like you can see the rest of the the, the white part look mm. looks great. Like it's it's like it's a it's like a it's like a, a cup, you know, like like the ears got depth to it. It's got a roundness to it. Um, but then the part in the center doesn't look like it goes in. It looks like it's just flat and like level with the rest of the ear. And I um, so I, I I'm starting to see that a lot from people, and I don't think people are quite understanding the point of why those ear parts are supposed to be darker. Or, you know, maybe it's style choice, and in which case, yeah, sure, go ahead. But to me, it's like the, the, the reason why ears are darker in the center 
is because they're farther back and the fact that the ear curves around puts a lot of shadow in those kind of places in the ear. Yeah. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I whenever I can be bothered, when I, when I make a vector and I can be bothered shading it, I always do put a little bit of shading in the ear like that, but it's not solid like that. Um, right, like it, it gives it depth, right? There's there's yeah. a purpose for doing that. I'm absolutely, trying to, I'm trying to find a good reference. But it's like when I think about it, like deer ears or horse ears, they are very concave, like that, right? Because they're three D right. objects, so like they do kind yeah. of wrap like that. So it's how much you want it to like wrap and show that depth. And so, like, I get that it's just like a very dark spot in Rarity's ear, but I kind of uh, like how. Applejack's ears drawn versus how dark it is compared to Rarity's, if that makes sense. Right, right. So if you're talking about the specific coloring, then you like the one on Applejack more than the one on Rarity. Yeah, so yeah, like, that makes sense. it's because it's a little bit more subtle shading and like you can see a little fluff in Applejack's ear, where Rarity's yeah. ear it is just kind of like a dark, uh, like recess, you know, just like a dark spot. Yeah. Um, you know what? You know what it reminded me of? Hmm. It reminded me of plushies. It reminded me of a plushie hmm. that might do that to simulate like depth or something like like to to simulate what the inside of an ear would look like i've seen some plushies that have like those like flat fronts to the ears that's I'm, what it reminded me of i got curious and i was looking through scooty boom scooty bloom's gallery and uh he draws ears uh like a lot like differently like um obviously you'd have to draw ears a lot if you draw ponies but i was gonna say <laughs> uh he draws them differently in like each painting um kind of like playing with the style each time okay. and it's like yeah, I'd say there's a lot of like really good uh like renderings of ears, but there in like in a couple there is kind of just like the draw the black spot to make like the inside of the ear look dark. Um right. and then in some other ones it's like let's really really render it and like add lots of fluff. I can tell this artist likes certain fluff things, like he, like the fluff in the ears and then you can see on Rarity's uh sides of her cheeks and then Applejack's cheeks as well. There's little bits right. of fluff. I guess not on Applejack's cheeks, sorry, just on Rarity's cheeks. You got floof. Yeah. Floof. Yeah. I- well, it, yeah, I, I'm looking through now, and you're right. There is a certain element of uh, experimentation to go on with yours, which is fine. Just totally fine. Um, I just wanted to comment on this one because this isn't something that I exclusively saw with Sco- Scooty Bloom by any means. This is something that I've started seeing with a lot of people. And I think, you know, artists in general, this might not apply to Scooty Bloom, but artists in general need to kind of look at when they're, when they're adding something to their art work they should understand they should make sure they understand why right i think some amateur artists again not saying scooty bloom does this saying (laughs) some artists might do this they might look at it and be like oh there needs to be a dark spot here because just because because right as opposed to as as opposed to like thinking like oh the reason why it's dark is because there's depth there and there's shadow there and like here's what the lighting is and things like that so like aspiring artists out there make sure that when you're adding something that you try and understand and you think through like why is this like this in this piece you know is it something that the artist just made up and it looked good or is there like a deeper artistic or scenic reason behind it yeah totally totally i agree with that Mm -hmm. i just i just get very nervous because i don't want to sound like i'm coming off too harshly but i think i think things should be open to critique right like I think I think things like that should be open to critique, and especially if the artist is experimenting, right? So if this artist is experimenting with ear stuff, then I think it's totally fair to be like, eh, this one didn't really work out so well. Keep trying. Yeah. Uh, critique's always a double-edged sword, and that's why we kind of tiptoe around it on yeah. our show, because it's like we're here to highlight art, but it's also like we do understand some subjects, whether it's the insides of ears or like valley or what have I'm you. An, I'm the inside of an ear expert. So <laughs> I'll have I you mean... know my finger's in there right now. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> you. <laughs> You're gross. But, it's like we we don't want to offend anyone, you know, and so we try to tiptoe on the concept of critique or whatnot. But we always I have mean an opinion, damn it. Yeah, we always mean well by it, and like if we want to be yeah. biased opinionators, we're damn well gonna do it. Yeah. Fair awesome. Enough. Well, um, do you have anything else to say, Joel? Um, there's also a little bit of weird hard shading on Rarity on her hair, our, our hair and tail, where it like curls around and becomes in shadow. I was actually I wasn't gonna mention that because I felt like I I felt like <laughs> I did enough with the ear, but yes, it's the same it's the same thing with the rarity's tail. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> mm. Scooby Doo seems so. to be doing some experimenting with uh, different types of shading mm. in this one. So I wish like, him the best of luck. I sort of want to say something about that. Um, it's like I totally agree with the critique uh, that like 
if you create a dark area of color or value or a different like hue or something to show something is recessed or has a depth or whatever um you definitely have to be careful with that and then render it in a way in which it doesn't seem odd if that's your purpose uh but i sort of it, like the more i look at it i sort of like the little areas like rarity's ear and then like the dark purple spots in her hair not so much oh because they're rendered accurately but because they're kind of neat in a way where uh i've definitely seen a lot of like very like classic like ooh, art historical paintings and stuff where they'll um where it's not so much about the subject and like how well it's rendered it's just about painting something with interesting uses of color and and whatnot it gets more into that like what's the word like abstractionist and stuff painting um and they'll if there's like a recess or like a hole or whatever they'll show that with just like a very huge blotch like straight like spot of color like the deep purple in her hair just to show that it's like there is a difference here like there is a hole here there is like this is a thing so it's like there's a step as an artist where it's like you realize that um there's parts of a character that like have uh depth or, or whatnot and then you will like put color there and you like realize like and you like this uh, represents like the depth in this character like the hole in this character whether you don't fully render it you still like you put that there so like it serves like those those areas in rarity like they serve their purpose right they are areas in color which is different and contrast her even though they aren't rendered in like a shading way that would look more realistic like something like assassin monkey would do but it's still like it's still a, painted in a way which i feel like is interesting and brings more color into the piece so it's like i don't have too many major critiques for it because i feel like it's cool for that theme does that make sense I, yeah. I will agree. It's a very interesting touch. Like, um, another spot I noticed it too is if you look at Applejack's hat, like just to the left of her ear, just like it's just like a spot of like a yeah. dark spot of color, like on the left hand side right. of her hat. And it's just like, I saw, I sort, I sort of look at it and I sort of like, uh, things like that. Um, like while I don't think Scooty Boom's going for that kind of like abstractionist, like painting, representational, blah, 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 junk that I looked at in art history, I can see kind of like similes of like large areas of color to represent um, aspects in something. If that makes any sense. Yeah. So what we're saying is it's not bad. Even though yes. these, yeah, even though these things may not fit in with how we sort of would expect, it's not bad. Because yeah. like we can critique them because it's not like, you could say they're not like a super accurate representation of what would be like a... Um, recess since i keep using that word like uh so, like if you look at something like assassin monkey draws because he's like the pinnacle of like oh ab like realistic pony rendering right uh versus uh something like this where it's just like a large spot of color within like the hair or within her ear to represent like oh you know that ear has a hole in it or oh these huge curls of rarity's hair are deep as the void or what have you you know what i mean mm. yes anyhow yes. yeah no it's 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 good stuff it's good stuff Question time. Questions. All right. So we got two questions if we've got time. We I'm going to start with question number one because it's the first on the list and therefore the first that we're going to get to. The second will be question number two. Uh, okay. First question being number, being number one is what is your favorite part of the show? What do you get the most enjoyment from? What is the thing that you think is the best part from Mummified Thunderbirds? <coughs> Please stop changing your name on Skype. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny uh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna preface this something with something as well because you just prefaced it with something i'm gonna preface this with just a just a general light request when you send in questions to this podcast and you say something something the show mention we what never show? know <laughs> what the heck you're talking about our show or because the we, we make a show and we also watch a show so when you say the show We've got to pick one of the two. So in this case, I'm saying we should pick My Little Pony because I think it'll be more, eh, I don't know. I, I, I like the question better when it's about My Little Pony, yeah. not about us. Um, but just for the record, if you would like to get accurate answers out of us. I like talking into the microphone for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you'd like to get accurate answers, please don't use the show. Please use like My Little Pony or CAC. Proper nouns, please. Uh, Proper nouns. Um, but yeah. Do you guys have an answer? Get wrecked, Anthony. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my favorite part is anything with Pinky in it. And you know, songs. I like songs. Cool. Uh, I, I was going to go with songs as well. I like when the um, horses sing. Yeah, I, I was going to say I was going to say songs. Uh, I'm a very... You know, it's funny. I never consider myself kind of like a, 
musically like i don't listen to music all the time but i think i have a certain musical appreciation i grew up with a lot of music in my household my my mom is very 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 musically inclined and loves to listen and talk and volunteer with lots of musical things like that so i really um like uh that i think for me i focus mostly on the the singing like i i really like vocalized songs right like songs that have vocals in them that have cool vocal things harmonies uh, great singers that's what i always focus on so i really appreciate that about the show they've got some really really talented singers and that is just a, a delight to hear yeah i like pinky's singing voice it's funny to me because i didn't expect to like the singing that much especially like you know in my first transition into a brony uh, when I'm first like watching the show, I was like, "Oh God!" Right. Like, "Oh, singing!" And then now it's like favorite part of the show. <laughs> like, I, right. really, I, I really feel like is that, is that your part? Is that your favorite part too, Burned? Uh, it's it's one of them. Um, when I I like to say when I first started watching the show, especially like in season one, two, three, even. Um, my favorite part was that it like it made me feel an emotion. Um, when like I would fear? watch cartoons or TV, I did it as like a a dull way to um pass time and like yeah. absorb media that i didn't really uh you know care about it was just like it was a way to to kill my existence and forget that time is passing yeah um yeah, i know what you mean but when i started watching my little pony like i became very invested in it right um and like i'm not so much invested in it uh anymore like these days i feel like i'm more invested in something like steven universe um be just because like i've been around my little pony for so long but i still feel like th there's episodes that come along like now and then where it's just like this like this makes me feel something um sucks and, you like, back in yeah and i really really enjoy this i really enjoy like this message or it makes me you know again feel some kind of emotion i feel like that's like my favorite part when i when i think about it um but songs do that too and so like when like when like yeah, they're singing yeah. when, or when yeah. they're singing they they make me feel that similar thing so like in in a way uh it they're like they're very closely tied for like my favorite parts of it you know yeah cool yeah i, w I will say um because i know people are going to ask this follow-up question but um my my personal favorite like i was just mentioning really awesome vocals and like harmonies and stuff and i wanted to mention the fact that um you know there there are certain points where like to prove that th they've got really awesome singers go back and listen to um Oh gosh, what was the song called? It was the song where all the three princesses sang together to Twilight. Oh, well, and Twilight sang as well. Um, anyways, mm. Cadence's part in that particular song, like you'll play your part, I think it was. Mm. Um, Cadence's particular part in that song is stunning in terms of the the voice. So it makes sense. It, you just it's, have it's a musical incredible. name. Yeah, yeah, and it's it, it's incredible. Along the same uh, theme of what I was saying, where like it makes you feel something. Also, I guess. I've, I think I've said this in the past, but my favorite part, quote unquote, of the show is just like how happy and uplifting it is because I really Absolutely. like like feeling something. So I guess for like a more concrete answer, like my my absolute favorite thing about the show is that it's it's cute. It's happy. It's uplifting. It's pastel and colorful and it's pleasing and it makes me feel something good. Yeah. So you know I what? I, I it's think it's definitely my favorite part to kind of to kind of answer for Ted on this one. Um, I, I think Ted was kind of in that boat as well. And I agree, too. One of the things that really, you know, attracted to me to the show and what got me really hooked was the fact that it was just happy, you know, and, and it wasn't it wasn't manipulative. It wasn't, you know, dark. There was something about that time, either in my life or in the world where, you know, it just things just seemed dark and every adaptation of a movie was a dark version and everything was sad and edgy and blah, yeah. you know? And so like to have this show that's just like, nah, we're happy. Just be happy, you know, like take some time out of your day, come with us and just be happy. That was really cool to me. So yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I think, I, I think, I think I remember Ted talking a little bit about that. So I can't give a proper answer for him, but I know that that was something that he definitely appreciated. Fair enough. All right, so we can we can if we're quick on the next one, burnt, <laughs> um, then we can do the next question. Okay, oh, so, oh, oh. Uh, how important to you is an artist's personal style <clears throat> versus technical skill? By Hunter Niff, I think that's oh, what God. they like. I don't maybe. don't know why you'd reference me. Oh. Right, um, this is not a burnt question at all. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna answer by just saying that I personally prefer 
artist's personal style over technical skill. However, I will note that for either case, if you are lacking a certain amount, it will take away from the piece. So you need to have kind of a minimum personal style and technical skill. And then past that, um, wow, I just hit puberty again. Um, past that, it's fine. I, do uh, that all the time. I prefer personal style. Okay, I'm going to go next because I know Bone's going to take forever. Yeah. Um, I I prefer personal style. However, um, I find the art, <clears throat> along the same sort of lines as you, Max, I find the art is a lot better if you have some technical skill in that medium. You don't have to have technical skill artist-wise. Like, you don't have to know, you don't have to like, take an art course or do anything like that to, to learn yeah. history and techniques and all that sort of stuff. But as long as you, for example, if you're a digital painter, if you're decent enough at digital painting, but have a style that is weird, I still think that's great. But if you do, if you're really good at painting, but not really, not not too good at watercolor, and you make a watercolor in your own style, it's good, but it's not as good as it could be. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Somewhat. See what I'm getting there? Yeah. <laughs> you feel I smell me, what man? the rock's cooking. You feel me? <laughs> no, I I no, agree saying. with the smells that you are protruding, uh, Joel. I think that's the first He's time anybody said burned. that. To you me. can't sniff him. <laughs> no, I, so you stop delaying. Go. <laughs> I, Your turn. I get. I get what you mean, Joel. Uh, no, I, I. I agree with both of you. Like, uh, I. I don't know. Um, I appreciate. Like you guys have been saying, just like I don't know, parroting you guys. Like I really appreciate a really really good technical skill. Someone who like I see is ridiculously good uh, at painting. Someone like Cosmo Unicorn. But then I also appreciate someone who just has like really unique style and that captures me for those things. Like someone uh, who like has a really unique style, is, like a Biocho or something. Like it just stands out above the rest. Um, and so like I have l- like loves in both things, but. Like, you, you know what know. I'm, I'm gonna say i don't think that these things can be compared I, I think these are two things that are just aspects of art and if you you know if one of them's good but the other one isn't well then that's what makes the piece interesting like that's the standout part of the piece right like i think we both like it when both are done well right yeah. but if one of if if you don't have a great personal style you don't have a very unique personal style but your technical skill is very good well you're still going to make a good art piece because it'll be interesting Mm. in terms of the technical skill it's just like it's like saying like (laughs) you know like what's more important to you like a like a good depiction like a good facial expression or a good body language it's like this is just yeah it changed it completely changes the piece if you have one good or or the other like it's just i don't know it's just a different emphasis well i feel like they're both closely related and then I like how do I put this it's like how important is one of the other to you and I feel like to me they're both important but not like differentiate differentiatingly important meaning right that, like if something ha- there's a lot of like art pieces that I've saved or that I really appreciate that have like a really unique cool style but technically they might not be that impressive but yeah. then on the other hand there's a bunch of other uh, pieces where it's like technically they just blow me away like even like and then the piece we featured today like it had a really really cool style but then it was also tech technically done uh, well in a lot of areas yeah and so like we've been saying I feel like when you put them both together like but obviously I mean we've had uh, a good example so much of each today but... Like yeah. we had we had the example of the Adrarius direct by one, the... as well as well, the Adrarius one, where it's technically and yeah. style Te- stylistically done yeah. well, and same with the, with the Twilight one. But then we looked at the Scooter Blue one, where it's stylistically really really good, but there's a couple of technical minor minor, right. minor technical not so goodnesses. Yeah, and the other thing is too, so it's like style is so preferential too, yeah. right? So it's just like yeah. how do you how do you, how do you like how do you rank good style over the other, you know? Yeah, it's personal you can You can kind of talk a little bit about ranking technical skill if people do this or they don't do this, but... Because the reason why I feel this question is so good is because when I think about both things just as a standalone, like, style is really important to me because there's things I like and there's things that I hate and I don't like at all when it comes to style. But with technical skill, like, there's certain aspects of skills that I really like and attach to and if those are good, then other areas of skill that are neglected, I could care less about. But that being said, if there's certain areas of technical skill that, like, aren't done well, it will make me hate the artist or hate certain pieces. And, like, I could name artists that have great technical skill and awful personal style, eh, but I'm not going to name I'm, names. I'm going to sum uh, up for me personally is 
Personal style is something that I will instantly really, really like. Technical still, technical skill is something that I will respect. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I'd agree with that. It's like, yeah. there's people I respect and they have really good technical skill in other areas, but when it comes to, like, anatomy or uh, style choices with characters, like, I just, I don't like yeah, it. Like- I'll, I'll, I'll respect yeah. and appreciate somebody who's got really, really good technical skill, but I don't like their style. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. To, to me, I guess the rating of an art piece for me is often how it grips me upon first viewing. Um, and in that case, style over skill. But again, it's so hard to compare and there needs to be a base minimum skill or else the style is going to be hidden beneath. Ugh. So yeah. <laughs> this is a good yeah. question, though. We probably ranted uh, about this for for a while. So that was sent in by Hunter Niff. Uh, I've noticed that Hunter Niff sent in a couple questions. They're all really good. Mm, he does, <laughs> he's, he's um he's also sent something to email which Bird you might want, might like to read through. Oh yeah, totally. But, but yes, he, he sent in really good questions. So we he, he's got pick a, some a good artistic mind. Awesome. Hmm. Okay, um, that's all everything for the questions. So plug time. Uh, plugs. All right, I can do that. That's my thing. Uh, so okay. we have a few places you can find us, picardotv slash Crusaders. Hopefully you're watching this on there because it was down last week. Uh, crusaders.deviantart.com, qdrcrusaders at gmail.com, youtube.com slash qdrcrusaders, qdrcrusaders.tumblr.com, facebook.com slash qdrcrusaders, and at qdrcrusade on Twitter. I think it was down two weeks, two weeks ago, ago by the yeah. time I, I meant out. to watch it this week, but I completely forgot. I was busy yeah. playing Rocket League. <laughs> ah, I see. Busy. <laughs> Rocket uh, cars. This new <laughs> DeLorean DLC. I love it. Radnan cars. What? All right. Um, okay. Uh, we wanted to talk about next week because next week is our Halloween episode. Halloween. Halloween-y. Um, so we're going to have our costumes as for normal. We're going to get silver to make us some costumes. Um, we don't really have any plans uh, so far, but we're going to try to look for some Halloween stuff. What we would like for you guys to do to help us out would be in the next couple of days before uh, Friday, October the 30th, because that's when we will record it. Um, if you have any Halloween pieces that you saw and you said, oh, that would look great on the show, tag us in feel it. free to send it into our email or tweet it at us or just get it to us in some capacity. Tag us in it. It's much easier for us to organize. <laughs> yeah, tag it, us on, on DeviantArt. It in better it. be spooky. Um, better and be yeah, spooky. Like we, would, we would love to. It's, it's be careful. I'm easily organizing. Spooked. Better be duding. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> it's very difficult to make holiday themed episodes because usually we have to record them before the holiday actually happens. So we miss all the art that gets made that year. So it'd be very helpful if you guys could, you know, come together as a community and help us out because we often have trouble with these episodes. Um, so, yeah. And Anyways, we're going to try to. Try to, try to... No, sorry. Did you did you have something to share with the class, Joel? No. Did you bring enough of that for everyone, dude? <sighs> All right. Um, also, next week Ted should be back. I don't think any of you guys. I don't think we're planning on being missing any of us, right? I mean, I don't plan on phrasing it, but... it. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, we'll be back next week with our regular podcast. We will also follow up this episode with a spoiler cast. So if you are on Picardo, then stay tuned for that. Otherwise, you can check it out on our YouTube channel. Spoilers episode was slash good. QDR Crusaders. Um, that's not always true. Just <laughs> 99% of the time. I, mean, I haven't even seen episodes uh, anyone out yet. So. 99% <laughs> of the time, 100% of the time. <laughs> All right. Well, that is everything for this week, guys. Uh, We hope you enjoyed it. Whether or not you're on the live stream or on YouTube, we love you all the same. Yes, Burnt? You whispering over there? I heard that. Ah, he's whispering. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, My name is Rainbow Plasma. My name is Burnt. And I'm Atmos Spook. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. I dream about you. (laughs) You're (laughs) weird.